All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and in today's episode, I want to have a look at a couple of things Bitcoin related that I think are really, really cool. So I'll show you those. Then I want to kind of take a look at this melt up chart, and I want to just give you every every thought I have about it. I want to show you every possible scenario that I can think of. I want to put every one of my cards on the table for you so that everyone has a realistic expectation and is aware of all possible outcomes regarding this. And then my intention after today is to almost shelf this chart because we don't need to keep looking at it. From here, we are long and strong. If you're following the channel, you'll know across the board, we've got loads of equity exposure. And so the focus really will be how can I, now I'm long, now everything seems to be going the way of the melt up. How can I get out as close to the top as possible? Now, if the top forms here or here or all the way up here, is anybody's guess. I have no idea where this top's gonna come, but all I know is I'm currently sat in some open profit and I wanna use my focus and my time and my energy to get me out as near as the top as possible, wherever the top comes. So I wanna use today's episode, like I said, just to kind of go over this, put all my cards on the table, explain to you how I got there, catch anyone up that's not really too familiar with this. And then, like I said, we're gonna to look to shelf this and just focus on the technicals going forward to see how close to the top we can get out. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, sit back, relax, hit that like button, and let's get into this. First of all, let me show you some awesome stuff regarding Bitcoin. Here in Lugano, Switzerland, the mayor walks around and shops in a bunch of different places and pays with Bitcoin. I'm not gonna play the whole clip, but you can see here, he walks into a bookshop and he buys a book with Bitcoin and Lightning Network. That goes fine. I think he gets some cash back as well. You can go and watch this in your own time if you want to. He then goes into a local barber's and pays for a beard trim <laughs> via lightning. Um, so there you go. And he can get cash back on doing so as well. And then lastly, he walks into a coffee shop and buys an espresso with Bitcoin. So really, really interesting developments. Really, really interesting that we're seeing this in multiple places worldwide all at the same time. I think this thing is going to be adopted on a mainstream scale this year. At the same time, MicroStrategy has announced the world's first Lightning for Corporations event to help educate companies on adopting Bitcoin payments in their websites and products. So again, MicroStrategy really gonna be pushing this forward, really going to be trying to get as many companies to adopt Bitcoin as a payment system and including holding Bitcoin on their corporate treasury. So this is a massive, massive, massive piece of news. And as this begins to unfold and take effect, we're likely going to see many, many more corporations start to follow in the footsteps of MicroStrategy. And then third and final, before we move on to this melt-up chart, look, the US Office of Science and Technology says that Bitcoin and digital assets could grow the economy, provide societal benefits, and help human rights advocates. And remember, this is from the US Office of Science and Technology. So again, we're continuing to see more and more countries and nations embrace Bitcoin. And of course, they don't really have a choice because if they do not embrace it, they are going to get left behind. So moving on to the melt-up chart, like I said at the start of this video, I just kind of want to use this as a summary. I want to explain to you the logic or the thesis behind all of this. And I want to make sure that all the cards are on the table so that nobody has unrealistic expectations. I am by no means saying that because signs look encouraging right now that we are literally going to go straight up all the way to the top of the price target up here and then go Great Depression. There's absolutely no way of knowing what's gonna happen in the future. All we can do is take it one day at a time. However, this is the most encouraging this has looked in a very long time. So initially, when I proposed this as a setup, I drew the head and shoulders pattern, the inverse head and shoulders pattern like this. And I said, I wonder if we're gonna melt up, right? Then what ended up happening is we broke down a bit later on. And I said, whilst I don't like to move the goalpost, maybe we need to move the goalpost. Maybe we need to draw it this way around and look for this to occur. And since then, that seems to be exactly what's unfolding. Technically speaking, we do have breakout retest resumption and we're above these local highs for now here, this cluster right here. So this is major technical repair. This is major structural change. And so far, the signs look encouraging, not to mention we can tick off the 50 basis point and the 25 basis point hike. And now we are looking out to a pause that should be seen within the next few months. I wanna be really clear here and say that I have no idea where the price is going and how high. My expectation is around 6,000 for the S&P, as I've shown multiple times on this channel, but I have no idea. We could absolutely do something like this, okay? That, that's on the table. We could also chop around sideways and not really do much for a long time. I don't think either one of those are likely. I think this melt-up is likely the most probable outcome but make sure none of you have any kind of unrealistic expectation. Just because we have broken out, just because this appears to be playing out now, does not mean that we are certainly going to new highs by the middle of the year. So this rally is still an if, but 
it certainly looks more likely now than it has back when we were at these lows back here this really did not seem like the idea that we could go to new highs this year just it just didn't seem likely at all however since then like i said we've broken out retest resumption above these highs and things look more constructive than they have done in many many months but the first thing everybody needs to understand about this melt-up thesis okay is it does not make sense so if you're sitting there scratching your head wondering how can it possibly go to all-time highs in just a few months yeah you're right it, it doesn't make any sense okay there are a million reasons to be bearish we've got hugely restrictive fed policy we've got the harshest rate hiking cycle that we've seen in a very very long time we've got the fed hiking into a slowing economy we've got threats of war we've got invasions of certain places we've got the us about to raise its debt ceiling or eliminate it altogether we've got the us debt at 31 and a half trillion over 31 and a half trillion we've got the bond yields so high that they are going broke they are literally mathematically bankrupt we've got whilst we've got inflation coming down it looks like there are fears that they're going to have to start to print soon because there's no other way to service this debt at the same time on the consumer level consumers have record amounts of credit card debt record amounts of loans they are living paycheck to paycheck in record numbers the list goes on and on and on and on doesn't it and it's important and i want to make this clear okay ultimately i think these bears are right it's important to point this out ultimately i think these bears are right and a huge depression is coming and i'm actually one of the biggest bears there is i really think that we're going to see 90 percent wiped off of the dow and i think we're going to see it soon but first i think we need to make new highs and as crazy as this might sound and i'll show you the evidence for this in a minute okay don't make the mistake of thinking i'm some sort of moon boy i think we're gonna have this huge blow off top move and then once we top once they start cutting rates and once they likely ban congress from owning stocks i think the dow loses 90 plus percent i am one of the biggest bears out there i just think the market is slightly wrong footed and i think they don't understand the game the market just doesn't have the experience yet to understand that this is how the game is played so if this rally unfolds like i suspect it will understand this it will be the most hated the least understood the angriest most shorted most doubted rally of all time it doesn't make sense but that doesn't matter it doesn't just because it doesn't make sense doesn't mean it couldn't happen okay so now we get into why i think this melt up is the most likely outcome first of all here's a fractal okay the candlesticks is the dow the yellow line is a fractal that led up to the great depression of 1929 so just overlaying the two you can see the one component that's missing here is this blow off top move keep in mind retail buys the top and it sells the bottom i think retail is ultimately going to be right everyone has been bearish everyone has thought that this is this massive plunge is what's been coming all the way through 2022 as we were correcting everyone and their dog thought that this plunge was about to unfold we even saw the cboe equity put call ratio spike to the highest level on record so what does this mean this means there was record numbers of people betting on downside record numbers of people would profit from a stock market crash there has never been a more shorted stock market than we saw going into the end of last year and so keeping in mind retail buys the top and it sells the bottom when you've got everybody and their dog selling like we've seen is it more likely that they sold right before this massive plunge is happening or is it more likely that they sold the bottom and now we're about to have this blow off top well i have been making the case over and over again that it's the latter i also think unfortunately for these people that piled in short down the bottom i think they're going to wait in disbelief until we're right near the top of this blow off top move and then unfortunately for them they're going to fomo in and then you're going to hear these narratives such as the fed has engineered a soft landing there's going to be no more recessions there's another 10-year bull market ahead of us blah 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 and of course after they've bought the top that's when we finally go full great depression 2.0 that's when i'll be called nuts again because i'm telling everyone that that's it i'm done i'm short the market or i'm selling my stocks and waiting to go long the vix this is just how the game is played retail sells the bottom and they buy the top and then they'll sell the bottom again so this was the next piece of evidence for me the most one-sided put to call ratio the most one-sided bet on downside that i have ever seen at the same time the 20 period moving average here in green for the small speculators the retail index position okay they were as bearish as they have ever been record amounts of bears at the lows all of this told me the path of most pain was higher from here not to mention we had certain indexes like the nifty 50 and the FTSE 100 start to make new all-time highs long before the US equities started to recover again I was saying this over and over again not the sort of thing you see during a bear market rally so from here one of the next pieces of the puzzles was the interest rate hikes 
So we've seen the 50 basis point hike down from 75. We've now had the 25 we can tick off. And the question is, is the pause coming? And of course, if you've been watching the channel, you'll already know what happens, okay? Usually when we get a pause in the rate hikes, we see the final blow off top move in the equity markets. And then when the Fed moves to cutting rates, we see the market actually start to plunge. And that is why I've had pause on the ramp up because the markets will front run this pause. They'll have this blow off top movement before they cut rates. And that sends us into the Great Depression spiral. At least this is what we've seen historically. At the same time, the US two-year yield has been calling a Fed bluff, as I've also shown over and over again on this channel. Whenever the Fed funds rate crosses above the two-year yield, which is the orange crossing above the green, the Fed has moved to pause in rates, the stock market has had a big blow-off final rally, and then when they move to cutting rates thereafter, the stock market finally plunges. And that's exactly what we've got today. So those conditions have been met. Furthermore, if you overlay the 10-year bond yield, with the Fed funds rate, we have that same scenario where the Fed funds rate is now above the 10 year yield. The 10 year yields have not been bid. Also telling us that a Fed pause is just a matter of time now. Remember markets are forward looking, markets tend to price things in and look well ahead. And also remember that the economy bottoms way after the stock market does. So we can see a bottom form in the stock market long before the economic signs start to improve. So. We've had this idea that we might see a melt up based on this blow off top fractal. Okay. Furthermore, we knew that retail was skewed way, 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 way too bearish. And they had maximum levels of fear whilst shorting the market with everything they had. We also know that the Fed is likely done with its rate hiking cycles in the very near term future because the bond market has been signaling that to us. And on top of all of that, the market seems to be bottoming well ahead of the economy, and we now have technical repair on the charts. So everything looks good for this to unfold just the way we thought it might, okay? The final piece of this puzzle is, are Congress going to be banned from owning stocks here? Well, as it turns out, they are now proposing something they call the Pelosi Act, okay? This is a bill to prevent Congress from owning and trading stocks. Now, whilst this thing has been proposed for a little while, whilst this thing has been kicked down the road and postponed a number of times, this thing finally seems to be gaining a little bit more traction now. Well, listen, Tony, you've laid it out perfectly, which is that when people send, when the voters send members of Congress to Washington, they expect them to do the people's business, not to be day trading on the stock market, not to be using the information that they get from briefings to go and make a quick buck on Wall Street. So here's what my bill does. It says no more trading of stocks by members of Congress. In fact, no more ownership of stocks by members of Congress. If you want to save, fine, put it in a mutual fund like most Americans do. But Nancy Pelosi is the perfect example of what should not be happening in D.C., which is people getting rich off in the stock market off of information they know because they're a member of Congress. Maybe it's going to turn out to be a nothing burger, but also maybe this is finally how they let Congress out of the top under the guise of it being ethical. They say, oh, it's not fair that they get to profit, especially off of inside information, which is illegal for everyone else. So they play this ethical card. They say it's not fair. We'll ban them from owning stocks here at the public's request, they always, of course, frame it as if the public have demanded this. But really, all it means is they don't want to sell their stocks down in this neighborhood here. They'd actually much prefer to sell them all the way up here. And of course, they would prefer that look, given that what is quite possibly about to unfold thereafter is a 90% crash plus in the Dow Jones. This part is, of course, speculation. But again, just like when we were back here, this whole notion seemed insane. It seemed impossible. And since then, we now have the Pelosi bill coming out. We have mainstream news coverage. Again, the stars continue to align. Finally, I want to play this 45 second clip explaining the Goldilocks period that I also believe we're in at the moment, which will also permit the melt up. When, when economies shift from inflation to, 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 to depression, you have a period of, you have a Goldilocks period that shift from inflation to depression gives you a period that looks like, hey, it looks like stability. You know, inflation is coming down, it's flattening. People don't realize it's heading for deflation, but that period is a period where stocks should have blow-off action. I mean, you know, you realize if you go from from heat, from heat uh, from boiling hot to freezing, there's one period when it's comfortable, right? <laughs> so even if you're going to have a major, major depression, which means deflationary, deep, deep, a, a deflationary depression, since you're coming off inflation, the one short period of time, maybe less six months to a year, which things seem to be pretty good. And that's the time when the market will rally. So there you have it. We are indeed in that Goldilocks period right now. That's what I believe. That's what the market seems to be telling us. I admit this whole notion 
just doesn't really make any sense. The more you think about it, the more you try and find it in textbooks, no, none of that makes sense, okay? But just because it doesn't make sense, just because there's a million reasons to be bearish does not mean that it's not gonna happen. Of course, it does not mean that we couldn't roll over from here. It also does not mean we couldn't chop around and do something completely different that I haven't thought of at all. But for now, this is right until it's wrong. That's how I'm gonna be treating this. That's how I'm gonna be playing this. And my next focus now is just to see how I can get out as close to the top as possible, wherever that top forms, whether this is the top, whether it tops up here, or whether we blow off all the way to the top here, wherever we blow off, that's, I wanna get out as close to the top as possible. And so that is my focus. So to make things more interesting as we finish off this week, Apple, Alphabet, and Amazon all missed earnings. This is likely going to see a lot of the move that we saw on Thursday here in the NASDAQ as well, get reversed. But to be honest, I'm absolutely fine with that. If we continued like this, you know, that would be very unhealthy. So a pullback of some level, maybe a gap fill to the prior candle there on Wednesday, or even lower than that down to this trend line before resuming up would be absolutely healthy in my opinion. So I'm not sweating any pullback until we lose this orange trend line. The same is true of the S&P 500. So for now, I'll make sure I include a video over the weekend to examine the closes and report on any significant changes to the markets. Things look good for this melt up. I kind of want to shelf this. I don't want to keep looking at this chart because this is kind of just like a, an abstract drawing, right? It's an idea. It's certainly nothing that we can really trade from. The chart I'm going to be trading from is, of course, this one. This is the one in which we already have the positions, the NASDAQ, the Dow, of course, we have positions, the FTSE 100. We've got absolutely loads of exposure all across the board here. So now the focus for me really needs to be how can we get out near the top? How can we look for positions and, and places to add to positions? How can we look to manage risk and lock in profit along the way? All of these sorts of things is what's important to me now. So as I said, I'll be looking to shelf this for a little while. I'll come back and, and update it as and when, you know, we'll come back and cover it as and when there's something important to say. If this starts to get very, very blow off toppy, if this does indeed start to become a true melt up, like I suspect it will, then as we get closer to the top, I will bring this chart back out and we'll be looking ahead to see if we can capitalize on all of this stuff here, because this is what we'd expect to see on the next portion. But there's no point in my mind spending too much time and focus on that yet when we haven't even completed the, you know, the, the melt up portion yet. So as ever, one day at a time, looking to book as much profit as I can, looking to get out as close to the top as possible, looking to continue to sharpen my skills as a pro swing trader all the time. So I hope that has left you with no more questions about the melt up. I hope the melt up is sort of understood. It doesn't really make sense. So you can only understand it to a certain degree because it, because it is a manipulated move ultimately to let Congress out of the top. That is what I believe. So I hope you enjoy your weekend. Let me know if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. In the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.